Well, here we are again. Hi. <laughs> so, last week we talked about Psalms 139, and uh, hopefully you guys did your homework, which was read through that, meditate on it, let the Spirit speak to you. Um, today, we're just going to piggyback off of that, and today I'm going to try to stick with the five Bs. You know what the five Bs are? Be brief, baby. Be brief. <laughs> I like the five Bs, especially when people testify at church, because we can all get long-winded at times, and uh, I think it's good just to give uh, the meat um, and not too many bones. So today, hopefully, we're going to drop a little meat. It's going to be quick. It's going to be um, important that you go and look up these scriptures that I'm talking about. So Psalms 139, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah, right? Come on, that never gets old. You're fearfully and you're wonderfully made. His thoughts outnumber the sand and the seashore towards you. Wow. Wow, you think God's thinking good things about you? So many good things. You know one way to help you understand how good your theology of a good God is and how much he loves you? Think about when uh, God created Adam and they locked eyes for the first time ever. What do you think uh, was on the uh, facial expression of God? <laughs> uh, that, that can determine a lot how you think about God. Um, do you think he was stoic or just kind of like, oh, I tried? Or do you think he was just pumped, <laughs> like stoked, just so excited that uh, he created his son, Adam, uh, the first man. And I just think God was head over heels, just beaming like the father was, like I was, like most dads were when they locked eyes with their kid for the first time. It's just a surreal feeling. Um, anyway, so Ephesians 2.10 says this, For we are his masterpiece. It says his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. And it's easy in a culture that's driven, get it done. Uh, what have you done? Who are you? Meaning I don't really care um, what you do. I just want to know, you know, um, or I don't care who you are. I just want to know what you do. You know, it doesn't value just you for you. Um, and so, but God is uh, just like the kingdom. It's the upside down kingdom. He's all about you. He cares about you. And um, it says this, that you're his masterpiece. That work, word uh, for workmanship is the word masterpiece. You're his highest thing he's ever made, the best thing he's ever made. And so before we get on to doing all these good things, we got to root ourselves in the place of identity, the place of sonship, the place of being loved, the beloved, uh, the place that he loves you the same on your best day, your worst day, um, that this God is for you, right? And never, ever against you. There's these two terms, if we're not careful as believers, we can all slip back into them, which is uh, sin management and behavior modification, where we literally try to just manage our sin and hyper-focused on our behavior. And I'm not saying that character and behavior and these things aren't important to God. I'm just saying, if you think you're going to white-knuckle this thing, if you think you're just going to get so like, I'm going to change uh, on your own strength and what you can do, good luck. <laughs> get back to me. Let me know how that went for you. Paul said, I put no confidence in the flesh. I can't do this. It's the grace of God that changes lives. Grace has a transforming power, a transforming work that literally changes us from the inside out, right? Hallelujah. This is the gospel that God came to rescue us, save us, redeem us, transform us, that it's him working in us. It says both for his good pleasure, uh, work out your salvation with fear and trembling for God is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So yes, we show up before God. Yes, we posture our, ourselves before heaven. Yes, we take thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. But at the end of the day, one plants and other waters, but only God causes growth. It's only God who can grow us. It's only God who can change us. Listen to this, Hebrews 10, 14. I've literally preached this out and offended people, so I'm sorry if I'm about to offend you, but this is the truth. This isn't even my sermon. This is the word of God. Hebrews 10, 14. For by one sacrifice, he made us perfect for all time, those who are being sanctified. Hello. For by one sacrifice, what Jesus did on the cross, made you, made me perfect for all time, those who are being sanctified. So what am I saying today? You're perfect. See, I might have just offended you. You're perfect. That's what the word says. It says God didn't make a mistake. That when he raised you anew in Jesus, when he 
when he brought you out of death and into life, where he took you out of the kingdom in the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom he is well pleased, he didn't make a mistake. He made you perfect. Yeah, we're growing. Yeah, we're changing. But the truth of the matter is you got to establish that in your heart that you're not a mistake, that God made you perfect, that he loves you, that you're chosen, that you're a new creation. This is the word. This is Hebrews 10, 14. This is part of your homework is to go read these verses and meditate on them and let God show you what he wants to reveal to you. But what I'm trying to say is some of us need to stop trying so hard to be a Christian, to be a believer. Some of us have been working so hard to even overcome sin in our life when at the end of the day, if you want to get changed, look at Jesus. Consider Jesus, it says. Fix your eyes on Jesus. You know, turn your gaze to him. Set your affections on the things above. Hello, that's Colossians 3. Set your affections or set your mind on the things above where Christ is. See guys, the goal of the Christian life This whole thing we're doing, it's Jesus. If it's not Jesus, we missed it somewhere. We really did. We got off. We got into religion. We got into good works. We got into trying to please God instead of realizing this whole thing is about Jesus. Eyes on Jesus, fixing on him. Um, Here's a tip. Here's a little something. Here's a nugget. 2 Corinthians 3.18. It says this. I'm going to read it to you so I don't mess it up. Um... But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into that same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. So what am I saying? Real simple. Beholding is becoming. The more we see him, the more we get transformed and get changed into his likeness, into his image. I mean, it's crazy. It's like, it's the grace of God at work. Like, how does this even happen? I mean, I'm such a different man than I was 15 years ago. I'm even a different man than I was five years ago, a year ago. Why is that? Because my eyes are on Christ. My eyes are fixing on him. I'm a better husband than I was when I got married. I'm a better dad with my youngest than I was with Samuel when he was first born. Now, you know, the firstborn's like the guinea pig. It's like a science experiment. What the heck are we doing? <laughs> but like, honestly, like as you behold the man Jesus, as you gaze upon him, as you posture your heart, as you sit in adoration, I mean, whoo, the will of God is simple, guys. First Thessalonians 5, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Why? Because it connects us to the person Jesus. We're rejoicing in him. We're giving thanks. You know, we're praying, we're talking, we're communicating. Eyes on the prize, right? One of my favorite lines out of Hebrews, I already said it to you, but I'm in with it. Consider Jesus. Consider Jesus. What does that mean to you today? I just leave you with that. What does that mean to consider Jesus?